<laughs> welcome to the Simply Luxurious Kitchen. I'm Shannon Abels and welcome to my kitchen and happy holidays. This is our first holiday episode for the Simply Luxurious Kitchen and I'm really excited to share with you three of my favorite recipes for the holiday season. One of them has been in my kitchen, something I've been enjoying for, for years. And the other two are ones that I've been working on this last year uh, with my mom. We've been working on different variations of this recipe and finally solidified what works best, um, what we most enjoy. And the third one is one that I just created and came up with inspired by a favorite baker of mine. So we're gonna go all over Europe for today's show. We are going to first though, start with a traditional Christmas stolen. So Christmas stolen has a long history. This recipe began back in the 14th century and we're gonna make that throughout the show. There are two different risings of the bread. It's really a simple bread to make. It just takes a little bit more time, about three hours. Um, not a lot of work during those three hours because you're letting it rise, um, but the end result is so good. So we're gonna get started with that. Okay, first things first, we want to make sure that we can leave the filling. So we are filling it with some orange, um, candied orange peels, and we're also going to fill it with raisins and some nuts. And we need to put that into some liqueur. Now rum is the traditional liqueur, um, but I'm going to use Grand Marnier. I love how there's a little bit of a subtle orange uh, flavor here. And then you also obviously have the cognac. So I experimented with my mom, as I just mentioned, um, I caught last month and <laughs> she came to visit and we experimented with six different liqueurs, all sorts of different fruit fillings from cherries to cranberries to um, a candy ginger. We tried everything. And what my favorite was, was a little hint of orange the traditional raisins, and I'm gonna add some nuts because I love having a subtle crunch. Now, you can see that I've ground these up pretty fine, but again, it's having a little bit extra different texture in the bread. So we need to do that because as soon as we let that start, we'll start with the dough. So you need three ounces of candied orange peel. I'm gonna chop these up, okay? Fairly finely but rough finally, nothing super fancy. Again, just you wanna make sure that they are small enough for a bite. But you kinda of wanna know what they are when you see them in the bread. Or not, again, it's completely up to you. Now, the history of the Christmas stolen, it's also sometimes called Christ stolen, it began in the 14th century in Germany, um, and it was served and made for the king. So it's considered the treat or the dessert or the, 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 the the bread of kings, I guess I should say. And it was definitely not the recipe you're gonna to make today. They couldn't even use butter and they did not have marzipan in it. There are so many different types of Christmas stolen um, out there um, and you can find one with more butter, you can find one as you're gonna see um, in, in recipes if you search online with different kinds of fruits. Um, it's really about what you love, but this one has marzipan in the middle. Now my first stolen that I enjoyed was a loaf my mom purchased when she went to Leavenworth, Washington, which is somewhat central Washington, and it's this wonderful barbarian community that they make stolen, Christmas stolen, and it's only sold um, during the winter holidays, from October to December usually. Now she brought that home for the Christmas holiday last year, and as you can see here, that was the, that was the bread. I was blown away because some people think, oh, it has fruit in it. It's going to be like a fruit bread or fruit cake. It's not. I couldn't get enough of it. Um, it was just fantastic. You have the bread, the fruit. There's a lot of sugar on the top because you, uh, you um, cover it with powdered sugar at the end result. And of course, you have the marzipan in the middle, which has a ton of powdered sugar in it. That marzipan is the key, in my opinion, to making this bread extra special. But it's not part of the traditional recipe. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, so it's served or made um, to be enjoyed during Advent. Now this is not a religious cake nowadays, but again, it started off um, being made during Advent. And so now what you'll find is you go to Germany and if you have the opportunity to go to a Christmas market, which I haven't had the opportunity to do yet, but everyone I've talked to who does just raves about the experience, 
in Dresden, Germany, in Saxony, it's the main city in Saxony. That is where the Stolen Festival occurs. Yes, a, a, a whole festival for this bread. It occurs and it specifically takes place during the second week of Advent. Um, and there are only 150 bakers that are given permission to um, display the official seal um, for the, the, the stolen recipe. Um, and um, it is sold throughout Germany. And as I just shared, it's sold in different bakeries throughout the United States and you can purchase it, but it's usually only made and sold during the winter holidays. Um, but what I attempted to do, um, or what I wanted to do, um, is figure out the recipe on my own because um, going to Leavenworth just isn't possible <laughs> every year. It's a long drive, and um, we just, as a family, really enjoyed this. Um, again, it's it's definitely for the winter holidays. It does not have to be tied to religion, um, whether you're religious or not. It's delicious for everybody. So, so I have chopped up the three ounces of candied orange peel. I'm gonna combine that with the chopped nuts and with the raisins, all three ounces each, approximately two thirds of a cup. And we're gonna put them, just put them in a small bowl. Okay, something that can hold that liqueur. The nuts go right in there. The raisins go right in there. You wanna mix that up a little bit, you sure can, you don't have to. And you're going to put enough of the core that it just barely covers the top. I know it sounds like a lot. Um, so there's really no measurement here because you're actually going to drain the liqueur when you um, put in the dough. Just make sure it covers it. There you go. Now, when we were doing the experimenting, we had six different bowls and uh, we, uh, we left it, let it ferment for, or, or soak up all that liquid for about three hours. And we left to do, um, a, take a walk and we came back and the house just smelled like the cooler. I mean, it will definitely smell up a space, but you don't have to do this for very long. Some people say to do it longer. Um, I'm just going to do it for as long as um, we make the bread and let it rise. So the bread's going to rise for 40 to 60 minutes and that's enough. That's absolutely enough. So set that aside and let's make the dough. Now what I did before, um, we started today is I added the yeast, three teaspoons of dry active yeast to one whole cup of whole milk that's at about lukewarm temperature. So not directly from the fridge. You want it to be somewhat warm. Yeast. So I've added the warm cup of one cup of whole milk and I've added two um, tablespoons of the half, half a cup of sugar you're gonna use for the entire dough. So just take two tablespoons out of there to feed the yeast and three tablespoons of yeast or a packet. So two and uh, three fourths te teaspoon uh, approximately. So now that's been sitting for 10 to 15 minutes. That's perfect. I wanna mix up the dry ingredients. So so I have four cups of flour, I have the sugar, the leftover sugar, which again started off as half a cup, and I have three-fourths a cup, I'm going to cut this in half, so a stick and a half of butter, three-fourths a cup of softened butter, so I have this sitting out a little bit before, um, so it's soft, so you can easily incorporate it into the dough, and these out of the way, we want the zest of one lemon, so... Okay, we'll put that right in. Now the beautiful part about this bread is you, with this recipe, you can make two or three loaves. Um, it's up to you, small or medium size, and or one big large one. And then you can also, it's gonna be recommended, um, you can enjoy it right away after it's out of the oven, absolutely. I have and it's amazing. <laughs> it's hard to wait. Um, you can also just set it in a cool, dry place and um, the, the liquid from the, from the fruit and the nuts will continue to permeate the dough. And actually the flavor gets even better um, after one or two weeks time. So, you know, make this the start of December, let it sit for a couple weeks. And then by the time you get close to Christmas or even New Year's, if you make it right now in the middle of December, you're gonna have even more delicious bread than what you would have had when you initially pulled it out of the oven. Okay, so we have the, the zest of one lemon. I need mace, cardamom, and cinnamon. Okay. So for cardamom and um, cardamom and mace, you want three fourths teaspoon. Okay. Some nice warm flavor there. 
Those are the mace. Now, what I was doing on Black Friday, um, so the day after Thanksgiving, I went to one of my favorite stores, the Spices, Savory and Spice, a little, little shop here in Bend. Picked up some of that candied orange peel. Picked up some spices. That was my happy place, loved it. All right, we need to put our cinnamon in there. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. There we go, yum. Okay, I want some salt. So a half a teaspoon of salt, my two pinches, and we need our eggs. So we want one large egg. Then we want two more egg yolks. So let's break those over a separate set. We don't need egg white, so save that for another occasion. <laughs> okay. Okay. Get those out of the way. Now I'm gonna put this. Oops. I'm gonna wait for the vanilla. We're gonna put the vanilla once it's in here. So let's put this in here. We want two teaspoons of vanilla. So there's all sorts of subtle, lovely, favorite flavors with a punch of some extra ones like the mace and the cardamom that just continue to add that warm kind of holiday flavor that you think of. Let's put our butter in there. Again, it's three fourths of a cup butter. Norman's sitting out here sunbathing. It's a beautiful day here today. Now, what um, I love about the holidays is I look forward to a snow because Ben gets some wonderful snow here to go skiing. And we actually ended up doing our first ski of the season right before December started. Uh, you can see, see a little peek at our first experience of the year here. ingredients with the egg and the vanilla and the butter and then you add the yeast milk and extra sugar and just let it come together and you're gonna have to use your spoon or a spatula as it goes because it takes some time for everything to become incorporated have patience with it it will come together I can smell all those spices as they come together oh it smells so good it's almost there if there's still some dough at the bottom and it just doesn't seem to be picked up and again have patience with it it usually picks it all up you can add maybe a tablespoon of that whole milk because depending on your climate you might be a little drier in areas we're very dry here in bend so i'm just going to add a half a teaspoon very little Yep, look at that, that's perfect. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna knead it for seven to eight minutes. Get all the dough off that dough hook. There we go. You'll knead this again, so go ahead and keep this handy. Remember we have two more rise or two total risings. This will be one and then the other. Flour surface. And again, put some good music on. <laughs> Have that someone in your house who wants to have a chat, have them pour a cup of tea and just chat with you as you go. So here we go, seven to eight minutes.
for about seven or eight minutes. And you can also put it, if you have a bread making machine, you can have the machine do it for seven, eight minutes, but I was the machine today. <laughs> and uh, here we go. See, it is a workout. <laughs> bread. So butter, and I like to use the butter uh, foil that I just used in the dough. Just take it and butter the bowl that you're gonna put the dough in. So it's easy to remove. Tuck everything under. Just nice soft bowl on top, a ball. <laughs> and just put it right in there. Whew. Cover it up with a dish towel or plastic wrap and put it in a warm spot or if you have a proofing oven or just someplace where it's about 80 degrees, um, 75 to 80 degrees and it will rise. Um, you wanna rise for about an hour but that hour is perfect time for you to be making the marzipan filling. So let's put this in a nice warm spot and let it rise. So while the bread is rising for the first time, this is when you can make the marzipan if you want to put marzipan in. And honestly, that's what makes this bread really special, at least in my taste buds opinion. So we've already made, my mom and I made a bunch of marzipan already from our first batch and we've frozen it. So I've frozen the, the, a bunch of them in my freezer so I can use them later. Um, it's really easy to make and it's so much more inexpensive to make your own. So what you just simply need to do, because this is the almond paste that you would buy in the store. It's about $8 in the store for a very tiny package here, which you need quite a bit actually for this recipe. And this is $8. Almond paste is really easy to make. If you have almond flour, if you don't have almond, pl almond flour, you can make your own almond flour by um, grinding up blanched almonds, but it's so much easier to just go buy almond flour. So you have one and a half cups of almond flour, one and a half cups of powdered sugar, one egg white, and one teaspoon of almond extract. That's it for almond paste. So that's the almond paste. Then you use that almond paste, you use one pound of it or cut that in half um, and use eight ounces, not almond flour, but the whole almond paste. But it calls for one pound of almond paste. That's why this isn't gonna get you where you need to go. It's so much easier to make your own. And you wanna include that with three cups of powdered sugar. So yeah, it's a really sweet um, consistency. Uh, people make it for, as we know, covers for cakes. They make it into figurines. They could be cookies. They can, there's so many things you can do with it. We're just gonna put a lovely little right through the middle of our, our, um, our bread. And then to the three cups of powdered sugar and the one pound of almond paste, you put two large egg whites and a little bit more of almond extract if you want more almond flavoring. Now, that's it. And then we divided it up and we had, I think, four or five um, um, individual um, um, marzipans they'll go right down the middle of the bread here once it gets done rising the first time so i've just put been keeping this in the refrigerator to keep it firm and i'm going to keep it there until the bread is ready um, you can also and i did try this if you want a little bit more orange put orange juice and orange um, zest into that uh, marzipan. Now I found it to be almost too much orange because I already have the candied orange peel and I have a little bit of the orange in the Grand Manier. But if you know you're going to love having some orange flavor in your stolen, go ahead and make orange zested or orange flavored marzipan. Um, but again, I highly recommend you making that instead of buying it. It makes so much more sense. Now, since I've already done that and we have an hour to wait, we're going to make our second recipe. My favorite thing to make just year round is a fruit tart. So we're going to make a holiday tart. And this was inspired by a Mary and Berry recipe. So we went to Germany for the stolen. We're going to go to England for this tart and I've adapted it to fit my taste. But when I saw her making what she made was a tart with apples and blackberries. I'm going to make it with pears. Oh and blackberries. So we're going to use pears. And then what I then did is use my favorite sweet or tart crust or pastry. And then I topped it with my favorite topping that has hazelnuts, has um, oatmeal and sugar. And I call it maize crumble topping with hazelnuts because 
we have a long lovely history with our neighbor when I was a young girl um, May was across the road and every once in a while more than every once in a while my brother and I would find our way to her house yeah. and my mom the recipe for her crumble topping and I have now added hazelnuts for this holiday tart so let's get busy making a pear and blackberry holiday tart with hazelnut crumb topping all right before we start making the filling we want the dough with the pastry to chill while we're doing that so we're gonna make my favorite my go-to sweet tart pastry so one cup of flour and then we have a half a cup of unsalted butter now and just have it from the fridge so it's still kind of chill then we want a little bit of sugar about a tablespoon a bit a little more it's okay too salt now I can actually just do half of this, half a cup of flour, a quarter cup of butter, and make it and make it fit a large tart pan, about an eight inch tart pan. Um, but if you want to make sure that you have enough, double it, um, and you can make small little tarts if you have extra dough. So let's get that mixed up. Perfect. Now we're going to add about two tablespoons to four tablespoons of water cold water and now you're just watching it to see, see it clump together you don't want it to get too clumpy but just stop it right before it starts clumping up so you hear how it started to change there i stopped pouring water i'm going to watch and see what it does perfect perfect so what i do when i hear it start to clump up as i just as you just saw me do there I just stop pouring the water and I see. Now I'm going to do a little longer. There you go. All the residual stuff came together without me having to add the last tablespoon. So I put about two to three tablespoons of cold water in there. Now, that's it. You're going to put this into plastic wrap, roll it up, flatten it into a disc, put it in the refrigerator, have it chill for 30 minutes while you're making a filling. When the filling's done, you can take it out, roll it, and we'll fill it up. So let's do that. All right, so you just need two pairs, and it really is up to you what pair you want to enjoy. Um, we have Bosque pairs, we have Bartlett pairs here. All right, and it really, it doesn't matter. These two are pretty firm enough, but I honestly love pears because they're not super tough, and they have a subtle sweet flavor. I equate, equate pears with holidays in the winter. Um, apples for me in fall. This is a winter fruit for me, um, and that's why I really like the pairing of blackberries and pears. So I'm going to choose the Bartlett pears and we're gonna peel core and then just cube them up rough cubes and we'll start cooking them so here we go all right so now we have the pears cored and peeled and chopped and so let's go over to the stovetop and start cooking all right, so now we have the pears on the stovetop. We're gonna put this at medium heat, approximately. I'll turn that down a little bit. We're gonna add a fourth a cup of sugar and about two tablespoons of water. And you're just gonna cook it over medium heat for about four minutes. And this is just allowing the water to be soaking into the, the pears, the sugar to be incorporated. And then after the four minutes, you're going to let it simmer for about seven minutes with a lid on. So let me get the lid while this is cooking. Again, medium heat, you're just four minutes, medium heat, uncover, let everything incorporate. You're not wanting um, the pears to get mushy, but you do want them to be cooked. And so that's what's happening here. Now it's been about four minutes, so we're gonna turn this to simmer. Cover it. Let that little thing do and wait for about six to seven minutes. So I'm just gonna put a timer on for six to seven minutes. All right. And then as soon as that's done, then we can add the blackberries and the filling will basically be done. All right, so it's been about seven minutes. Oh yeah, they're ready. I'm gonna add the blackberries. Stir it up. And now, leave it uncovered for about seven more minutes until all the juices are incorporated and then your filling's done. Okay, this is looking really good. Look at all the juices in here. Now, those juices are going to be the drizzle of fruitiness at the top of this dessert when you serve it. So you're gonna save those. What we're gonna do now is turn this off 
and we're going to drain the juices into another bowl and keep this for the filling. Let's use this, sits on top. The pan will probably be hot, so let's use that and now drain it. Yeah. Oh, it's just warm and you just know that fruit is cooked through and it's got that lovely holiday color. that so now what I'm actually gonna do is just put this right back in here okay I'm gonna save this and all you have to do to make this um, thicken is to cook it over the top top of the stove top um, medium heat until it thickens up the viscosity is what you want it kind of like a syrup and then you can Put it on top of the Chantilly cream, on top of the ice cream, whatever it is you top the tart with. So that's where that will rest for now. This is what we're gonna do with the rest of the tart. Let's make the topping. So I'm gonna move this so you can see me. What I've done is I've already prepared the pan to cook. We're gonna melt three tablespoons of unsalted butter, okay? And the key, there we go. The key with this is I actually just use it all in one bowl and then I mix the dry ingredients in a separate bowl and then I combine that into the butter when it's warm. So I'm melting the butter down. While that's melting, let's put the dry ingredients together. So I want one third of flour, one third of oats. This is the part that I like kind of has a different texture and it's kind of mm, lovely. So that's the flour and the oatmeal. Now, one, excuse me, two tablespoons of brown sugar, two tablespoons of regular sugar. Okay. And the extra specialness. <laughs> I finally ground up um, roasted hazelnuts, unsalted roasted hazelnuts. Now with everything we're doing today, putting the nuts in the stolen, putting the nuts in here, make sure they're already roasted so that they still have that crunchy flavor. So I'm gonna put about two tablespoons, okay? And then a pinch of salt. And I just mix this up with my hands. And that's all there is. You add the butter and it is done and ready to crumble. Ooh, the butter's almost ready. Perfect. I'm gonna turn this off. I don't need to brown it. I'm not browning the butter, I'm just melting it. Now the pan's hot, which is fine. We just add the dry ingredients in. I use a fork or a spatula, wooden spoon, whatever. But it's just gonna start to incorporate really simply. And then just make sure, oh, it smells kind of sweet. I love it. Okay, make sure all of the dry ingredients are incorporated. And that's your crumble. Oof, yum. That simple. I often have more crumble than I need, so I'll save it in the refrigerator because there's butter in it. Um, and use it a month, a week, in later in the month if I want to. Um, if I want to spruce it up a little bit, I just add a little bit more melted butter and things come together again. So the rest of the tart that's going to go on the top is done except for the Chantilly cream, but we're going to do that while the tart is in the oven. So let's put the tart together, roll out the dough, and stick it in the oven. All right, let's roll out, roll out the dough. So it's been chilly for about 45 minutes actually. And I, I put a little sugar on my surface and I'm also gonna put some flour on it. I like putting a little bit of sugar in the dough back into the dough because there's already sugar in the dough and it just adds again that sweet crust. So we'll roll this out, a little more on top. And just roll it out to the thickness that you prefer that will fit your pan. And I'm using a round pan, but you can do mini tartlets too. Um, it's whatever you want. All right, so now we're gonna put this into the tart pan. There you go. And remember, you can always patch it up, so don't feel like, I like to put it right next to it, just so I can slide it over. Perfect. I just want to make sure that it's snug in the corners. 
so it doesn't break when you put the filling in. Now some people in different recipes call for a blind bake here. I don't. I don't find it necessary, but that's that's just my choice. You can definitely blind bake this and then put the, dough, the filling in. Um, but for this dough, it works just fine. You can cook it at the same time that the filling is. I love it. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to go over it with a rolling pin. Finish off the edges. Take all that lovely stuff off. Taste test it. Let's taste it. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right, there we are. Now for the filling. This way. crumble I'd like to add a little bit more butter to the top so we're just going to put about two tablespoons of unsalted butter around and then the crumble Yum. <laughs> and be generous with it this is the holidays after all now I'm going to put this in a pan so that it goes into the oven neatly and easily. And we'll bake it for about 30 minutes, um, 30 to 35 minutes, check it. If you're making the small tartlets, I would only bake them for about 20 minutes, 20 to 25 minutes. Um, and this would make probably two, for sure two, maybe three, depending on the size of your tartlets. So let's put this in the oven for 30 minutes. Now while that is baking, we're going to make the Chantilly cream. It's very easy to make. Just need a little bit of heavy whipping cream, a little bit of vanilla, and a little bit of sugar. Let's get on that. So now to make the Chantilly cream, you can absolutely have ice cream with this instead. Um, I like having the Chantilly cream as a special occasion. It's just a little more decadent. It keeps, um, you know, it doesn't have to be cold, so it can be room temperature and like ice cream. And it just, it just. Ah, it's just a fancy little extra special thing. But normally I do put ice cream or gelato. But let's make chantilly cream. So about a half a cup. Okay. And we're gonna put a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay. And then you just whip it, hand whip it um, with a whipping um, whisk or with a hand mixer for about three to five minutes until you have stiff peaks. Here we go. And that's all you have to do um, to make chantilly cream. And uh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> now let's reduce down the fruit filling um, syrup so we can drizzle that on as well. And then that dessert is ready to go. Okay, so now we have the dough. It's been risen for over an hour. And now we're gonna drain the fruit and the nut mixture. We don't need any of the juices. So if you wanna keep the juices for something else, you sure can but you actually do not need them for the rest of the recipe. Get all of the fruit down, get all of those little nuts out. They're chopped up nice and fine. Perfect. Now we're gonna punch the dough down. Woo, look at that. We're gonna punch the dough down. <laughs> That's always so much fun. <laughs> and we're gonna stick that in the dough, uh, the bowl again with the dough hook. We're gonna shake all the extra juices out here. Come on, babies. I'm gonna squeeze it out. Just we just don't want any excess moisture. But it's gonna there's gonna be obviously some moisture in the fruit and in the nuts that's gonna permeate through the dough, but get out any extra. Okay. Oh, that was so good. Just until it's incorporated. You're not kneading it again at all. You're just mixing it until it's incorporated. And you do want to make sure that everything is inside the dough and that the raisins aren't all just on the outside of the dough. You want to make sure it's all incorporated within. So really let it work for a bit. Now we're going to divide this into two loaves. Get this out of there. You've been great, but you're done. <laughs> okay. Now if the, the dough is a little too wet, don't worry. 
You can add a little more flour and that is fine. So we're gonna cut this in half. How you doing, Norman? And we'll mix one at a time. And mine is a little too wet. Not too wet, just, you know, perfect. Norman's going outside. So now you just kind of roll this out there. You can get a rolling pin if you want, but just make it up to an oval size. And I'm gonna get my roll. Oval size, more oblong than not, because again, this is a loaf of bread. Okay. And this is when you put the Mars pan in. So this has been in the refrigerator. And this goes right down the middle. You don't want to put it right actually down the middle. I shouldn't say that. You want to put it just off to the left or the right, whichever side you want, um, because it'll help incorporate it more in the center. Make it so it's about the length of the bread, because you want to run down the whole part of the bread. So bring the left up and all the way over. Okay. Now you're going to bring the right up not all the way over necessarily, but at least healthily overlapping the part you just put over on the left side. Now we need to tuck the ends in so that they cover up the marzipan. Just pinch them all together. It's going to lay on the other side. And you can kind of stretch the dough at this point to make it work. And pinch it together. Again, it's going to be sitting on top of itself, so it will stay pretty well together on its own. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And that is a stolen. Whoa! <laughs> so let's get a sheet. Now, one thing you want to do. is any raisins that are on the outside you can see they're going to burn so go ahead and get rid of them you have raisins on the inside so don't worry you're not getting rid of what you love it'll just make it a little prettier finish so that one done over but again work with or do with what works for you we find that this dough is pretty sturdy it doesn't move too much it'll expand outwards and upwards but now pinch it oh this this house is just starting to smell very cinnamony and macy as far as those, those uh, spices we put in here this is yummy. Okay, perfect. Now we'll roll it over. Give it a good shape. Now some traditionalists will take their hand and make a hump on the top of the bread. And this is, again, another um, symbolic gesture to the hump of the camels who brought the kings to see um, Jesus. Again, this does not have to be religious bread. This can be absolutely delicious bread because it's the winter holiday season which is how i enjoy it throughout this time of year um, but you would just use your palm the side of your hand and just nudge it down and that would give it a hump now i don't do that because just don't need to okay so let's move it perfect 
Now remove any raisins. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna cover them with plastic wrap. We're gonna let them rise for 40 to 60 minutes. So just an hour, no more and then we will um, bake them. So the key thing here is to put them in a place that's warm. So I'm gonna put them in an oven that's about 80 degrees um, to 100 degrees, um, and uh, then we get to bake them and enjoy them. Okay, so now the tart is done. How perfect timing is that? So let's get that out. Oh, nice and brown. See, you just don't need to do a pre-bake. It's nice and brown and lovely. We're gonna let this cool for a bit, um, but I'm gonna get it out of the pan and the big pan and let it sit off on a, a cooling rack. And then we have one more. This is my absolute favorite drink to enjoy during the cold winter days here in bed. So let's get to that. All right, the third and final recipe is a sipping hot chocolate or chocolat chou. Um, in French hot chocolate. Now, I love rich sipping chocolate rather than drinking hot chocolate. And that is a European typical hot chocolate. You're gonna use high cacao count in your, hot, in your chocolate that you choose. I'm using dark chocolate or bittersweet is a great one to use as well. And this one actually came from Belgium. We're gonna include milk, whole milk, and heavy whipping cream. And you don't really need much else than that. So this is something you can serve in a small espresso cup. And uh, let's get started. It's rich and lovely and just fantastic. Okay, so this is gonna serve about three to four people's small espressos, uh, espresso size servings. So we want a cup and three fourths a cup whole milk because there's gonna be a total of two cups of liquid in here. And you can always do more um, heavy whipping cream um, and less uh, whole milk or vice versa. It's up to you, depending on what you have also in your refrigerator. And then you make up the rest of that two cups with what you have for heavy cream. So I put one and three fourths cup whole milk and a fourth a cup heavy whipping cream. My Oscar is coming to help me here in tap dancing. Hey bud, hi. So we're gonna do a three ounces, three ounces of dark chocolate, just roughly chopped up, okay? And I like to put a little bit of unsweetened chocolate, um, high cacao count, high quality, and I usually put about a tablespoon. And you can use a tablespoon of your fingers, it's up to you. <laughs> and it should be on medium heat. You don't want to boil this. You want to just melt the chocolate, incorporate everything. All right, it's starting to melt. It's getting a little lighter in color, um, nice light brown. But if you've ever had the opportunity to go to Paris, you may have visited the famed tea house Angelina's in the first arrondissement right there by the Tuileries. And it's a beautiful place to go just because it's beautiful inside, but it's known for its chocolat chaud and uh, it's hot chocolate. <laughs> and um, about three, four years ago, I had the opportunity to go. And as you can see here with this cup of hot chocolate, I went in there for breakfast too. Um, and it was just a wonderful experience. It was delicious hot chocolate. And in fact, they do have a new store in New York City and they ship their sweets and goodies um, around and their hot chocolate mixture, you can buy that. Now I will say though, I think you can do it better when you just play with the right ingredients. If you have quality chocolate, high cacao, if you have whole milk, heavy whipping cream, that's really all you need. Um, the thing about hot chocolate, European hot chocolate, it's gonna get thicker with every use. So we're gonna enjoy it today at its least thick that it's ever gonna be because every time you reheat it, it's gonna get thicker and thicker and oh, oh so lovely and thick the next time. Um, but where I got this recipe or where I started to play with this recipe, there's a fantastic um, patisserie in Walla Walla, Washington, Colville Patisserie. If you have a chance to go in, their bakery is phenomenal, has all sorts of French treats and sweets. 
and they have a hot chocolate, which I call their chocolate show, that reminded me of Angelina's. And I asked them, I said, can I have your recipe? Can I see how you put this together? And so they shared it with me. Now it was the big bulk recipe. So I sized it down, then I played with it a little bit. Now they've added a few other things that I did not add to mine. I kept mine very simple. But the one thing they made sure to add was whole milk, heavy cream, and then you have really good chocolate, actual chocolate. All right, so this is almost ready. And the thing that you can also add is a little bit of sugar. If you want yours to be a little sweeter, um, add about a teaspoon of sugar or powdered sugar. Some people add powdered sugar. Um, I'm not going to, um, but you sure can and figure out what you like. Some people also add espresso, ground up espresso beans um, or espresso powder to add a little bit of that coffee flavor, which is a great idea. It's just so simple. And it's just so, in my opinion, better than any powder could be because it's coming off fresh. I don't know if it can be fresh on a chocolate bar. Um, and it's just, I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> now the chocolate bars that I really like to um, use are Scharfenberger. And it sounds German, but it's actually a, a company in San Francisco that began um, in 2008, I wanna say, um, by a gentleman who was actually the first chocolatier, um, artisan chocolatier, to actually put the percentage of cacao on chocolate when it was sold in stores. He's the first one to do that. And that is the chocolate I prefer to cook with. Number one, it's from nearby San Francisco. Um, number two, it's not that expensive, but it is high quality. And I'll show you a picture of it here. Um, they have all different types of chocolate. Um, but uh, all you need is three ounces. So you can have a lot of chocolate in your epicerie and uh, always be ready to make hot chocolate. So take a look at this. Now what I want to do is thicken it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is heat this up to simmer. I want to see it boil a little bit. Just simmer though, boil. Not big, big old bubbles, but tiny little bubbles. And as you simmer it, it gets a little thicker. So that's where you want to decide how thick do I want this. Now initially you may not want to thick at all. It's going to be good either way. This is done. This is perfect. So now we're going to dress it up and serve it up in espresso cups. Let's do that. So say you just pull it off the stove, you're ready to serve it. Easy peasy. We're just going to use a ladle, serve it up, and dress it up. But maybe you don't use it all. Don't worry. Put a lid on this. Put it in the refrigerator. And then when you want more hot chocolate, tomorrow, two days from now, put it back on the stove and reheat it back up. It'll be a little bit thicker, but it's still gonna be oh so good. And just as chocolatey as you imagine, maybe a little bit more because it's a little thicker. But we just made this. So, we're gonna dish it up now. Okay, and again, like I said, this is sipping chocolate. This is not, oh yeah. This is not a full cup of oops, hot chocolate. One for you. We're not done yet. Remember that Chantilly cream we made for the tart? We're gonna use some of that here. Now, if you wanted to infuse this with a little bit of cinnamon or a favorite spice or whatever you wanna to do to add a little bit of extra something, just whip, whip that into here real quick and make it your own. Um, but I'm happy with vanilla, so I'm gonna add vanilla. And some shavings of chocolate. It's gonna melt immediately. Here we go. Perfect. Shavings. There we are. Chocolate show. It is so simple, so good. Now let's give them a sip. Woo! <laughs> chocolate it's so rich and a sip is enough by the time you get down to the bottom of this, this cup you will be completely satiated and feel like you've been spoiled a little bit and we all need to spoil ourselves during the holidays as well as those we love so here we go one more sip mm, so good so chocolate show a simple french simple luxury that you can make in fewer than 15 minutes, maybe even 10. 
<laughs> now we have two more goodies to get to. So let's take out the stolen from the oven that's been rising and get it ready for the oven to bake and then we'll get into the tart. All right, so I'm gonna take the stolen out of the oven. It's been about 40 minutes. So this is the first rise of it being in a loaf, which is the only rise it gets to do. All right, Oof, yeah. Now, now all we need to do is turn on the oven to 350 degrees and bake it for 30 to 40 minutes. You want it to be really nicely golden brown, not lightly golden brown, but golden brown, deep golden brown. So check it, everyone's ovens are different. And that's it, let's put it in the oven. All right, the pear and blackberry holiday tart is done. The crumble is nicely brown, so is the crust. Let's dress it up. Now first, let's put the whipped cream. <laughs> Mm. Now, and if this is too thick, just whip it up. And if you want to warm it up right before you serve it, you sure can. And look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to try this. And again, ice cream, gelato be just as delicious. Mm. I love pear. I love it so much. And the sweetness, a little tart bite, but not much. If you want it less tart, put more sugar. But I just love the combination of the tartness of the blackberry and the subtleness of the pear. So good. Mm. And that color is just a holiday color, right? So good. All right. So that's the holiday tart with pear and blackberries with May's hazelnut crumble topping. And we still have the star of the show, the stolen bread. We have about 30 more minutes to go. And I'll pull that out and give it a bite. All right. The stolen is ready to come out of the oven. Let's get to it. All right, I love how they've turned out. They're nice and deeply golden brown, and that's what you want. Now they're gonna be hot, so what I like to do, and this is good, we want them hot, is if you have toothpicks, get a toothpick out. I'm gonna melt some butter, and then we're gonna brush these with butter, and the holes that we're gonna make with the toothpicks are gonna let the butter soak into the bread. So let's melt some butter real quick. And it really doesn't matter how much, just a couple tablespoons. You can do more if you want, because you might want to do it again. Um, but key thing is you want butter. Now the powdered sugar will go on top and the butter on top of the bread will allow that powdered sugar to really stick to the bread. Now this is all being done while the bread is still warm. So you may be thinking, well, that powdered sugar is gonna melt and it's not gonna look so white. And you're right, but it still will more than you realize because you're gonna do a pretty heavy coating. When it does eventually cool, you can add more powdered sugar to make sure that the, the white powdered look is still present. Okay, we're waiting for the butter to melt and we'll get started on that. And if you wanna make sure that they are done, just take a thermometer into one of the ends. Actually, let's do this one. And it should read 190 degrees. That will tell you that it's done. I'm just using it very gently because that crust is ooh, so finished, so nice and brown. And that's gonna be like a nice little, not super crusty, but hard enough that there's a differentiation in the texture between the inside and the outside. All right, just do it everywhere because you want the butter to soak in. How are we doing temperature-wise? Oh yes, we hit 90. So we'll let this sit for five minutes while the butter is melting. We're gonna continue pricking here so that the butter can get in and doesn't just run off. Oscar's doing a tap dance for you. Yeah, I'm talking about you, butter. <laughs> He's like, I'm ready to eat all this good stuff. I hear ya. Yeah. Now, our holiday decorations in the house go up in two different stages. So um, after Thanksgiving, so during Thanksgiving weekend, I decorated the front of the house and very simple. 
that just had some cedar boughs and um, some cedar garland. Um, put a put a fresh wreath on the door, and uh, here's a picture of one of the boughs. Um, very simple decorations. I have a post about all the things that I'm doing during the holiday season now. Uh, if you'd like to check it out. But then that's the first phase, and the second phase is when we go get the Christmas tree, and we go up into the wilderness. We get our tree permit for five dollars, and we go up and get that up near Mount Bachelor. And last year it was a ton of fun. It was quite a workout. Um, but as you're watching this video, um, hopefully the tree will be up and you can see pictures of it on, on the blog. So, you know, it's a simple, it's a simple thing. It's a simple traditions. And um, this bread has now become a tradition in our family um, that we enjoy sharing. My mom has her recipe now after we did all that experimenting and um, she's making some for their household. I'll be making this for mine and um, sharing with my neighbors. So it's all been pricked, ready to go. Now, with the butter. Yeah, that's gonna get all the way Thank you. Okay, there we go. Just, yeah. And this bread will soak it up. It'll just soak it up because that outside crust, it's it's done. And that's why I want, want it to be dark, golden brown, not light. I've made that mistake. Um, but that's how you learn, right? And you see, oh, I need to cook a little longer. Um, this is what I remember when we enjoyed that loaf from Leavenworth. And again, this butter is going to make sure that the powder sugar sticks on. Oh. And I'm using about four tablespoons of butter for two loaves for this recipe. Maybe, did I say two? two three to four, sorry, three to four. Three to four. Oh yeah. Get your powdered sugar handy. Oh, so good. Now, and be generous with this. This is going to be Be very generous. You basically want to cover it and make it look white. And there's two different theories as to what it means. Um, with regards to it being the second week in Advent that they make this for, this is supposed to represent the swaddled child um, in swaddling clothing. Um, others have shared that it's supposed to represent the white snow on the mountains in Germany. So it is up to you what you want to interpret it as. But either way, it's gonna be darn good. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. And it looks like snow coming down, doesn't it? Ooh. It is definitely a sugary tweet, treat and definitely what makes it special. All right, so now we're gonna let it cool completely. And this is when you, if you don't wanna eat it today or having just baked it today, you would want to wrap it up um, gently in um, plastic wrap and place in a cool place, not in a refrigerator necessarily, but maybe a pantry. Uh, just not, not place any place warm. And then the flavors are gonna continue to ferment um, in there and take it out in a week, two weeks, and enjoy. All right, I'm gonna let these cool for 10 minutes and then we're gonna slice it up and see how it looks inside. All right, now that it's cooled, I gave it a little bit more powdered sugar, and now let's give it a, a slice and see what it looks like inside and have a bite. Okay, so I'm gonna go here. Oh, it cuts so nice. Oh! oh. <laughs> so let's take a bite. All right, oh, it's still warm. That's kind of awesome. And let's take a bite. Mm. You have, it's like a spice bread, and but not too much, just enough you taste the cinnamon. The marzipan right now is still warm. And then it adds that extra sugar to it. And the outside crust has just got the right flaky toughness to it to give it an edge, but it's still buttery and lovely. Oh my God. 
Uh -huh. Pair this with a hot cup of tea. Serve it cool, serve it warm. If you want to reheat this after you've had it out and you want to warm it up, maybe stick it in the microwave for a little bit. Um, but it's still. Mm. So good. <laughs> a holiday feast. Mm. This has been so much fun. Thank you for joining me. We've traveled around Europe. We've gone to England. We've gone to France and had chocolate show. And we've gone to Germany and had Christmas stolen. I hope you enjoy one, if not all of these. And thank you for joining me today. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your food. And enjoy stepping into your kitchen. Bonjour and happy.